you know, I, I grew up on Cherry Street in the Lower East Side of New York, and it was a lot of fun. I used to work Sammy's Bowery Follies, and for Sammy Futes and Betsy, and it was a very Jewish area where I worked. And I mean very, very Jewish. Second Avenue, good Jewish theater. Um, Philip Roth, you are Jewish, and you wrote a, a screenplay called I Was a Jewish Sex Worker. Sex worker, delicate. What do you mean by I was a Jewish sex worker? Is it, and it's a whole thing about your life. This is a mm. true, true story. Right. And you're born from L.A. You came from uh, L.A. I'm from to L.A., New York. three blocks from the Music Hall Theater where it's going to play, Maple Drive. The movie opens today mm -hmm. here in Los Angeles in Beverly Hills. Right. Delicate, uh, delicate words, sex worker. What do you mean by that? Well, a sex worker could be anything working. Uh, I, I did what I called erotic massage, which was I gave uh, men massages, like sexual massage. I had an ad in the back of a of a, one of the gay newspapers. Mm -hmm. And a uh, sex worker could also mean people who do like st stripping, dancing of some right, sort, right. porn. People in the porn industry will sometimes call mm -hmm. themselves sex workers. I see. But you would give them massages. Right. And used to go to their homes or mm -hmm. into their hotel rooms uh -huh. and do these things. And you wrote a screenplay about it. You, first of all, you did one first screenplay, Boy's Life. Right. Was that about your life too? Mm hmm. A shorty. Yeah. This was a short. Yeah. And it got great reviews in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And um, this, matter of fact, just got back from Berlin right. with this one. Right. I was a Jewish sex worker. Uh, God, what do you think about the Jewish people's hearing that word? Uh, they're fagala. It's a fagala. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, well, I mean, come on. Well, you know, I think it was uh, like a prostitute. It really, yeah, you got paid for this. Exactly, now. exactly. How do you feel about this? Well, I feel uh, okay about it. It was something uh, that I did for that period in my life. Uh, I had good and bad times doing it. You know, I don't look at it like it was necessarily a, a negative thing. No, I, I understand. A lot of people. But your mother and father, they're from a very, very Jewish family. Right. Here in L.A. Right. Or, come on, how did they react about their Philip Roth? Well, I think they, they think I'm a little strange. And probably, little. and rightfully so. A you say? Come on. <laughs> I mean, I think it was it was bad enough first, you know, having a son who is a, a fagala, and then and then doing erotic massage, and and then on top of everything, he had to go and make a movie about it. Exactly. So why did you do that, Philip? Come on. Do you, do you, I mean, it's explaining I, the reviews are good. Here, I'm just reading a review that Kevin Thomas gave you, and a good reviewer uh -huh. loves it. I mean, he isn't, loves... Isn't he, that shocking? Yeah, it is, because it's, you know, I don't like what's-his-name in, in New York City on the radio. You know who I'm talking about, in the sex part of his life, and biggest thing in the business. I have no, you know, I can't believe it. Uh -huh. But he made a great movie about his life, too, you know, Howard Stern. Uh-huh. But here's another Jewish boy. Uh-huh. And now you're coming up with this Jewish sex work, massaging right. as a male prostitute. Right. And your mother and father, how do they accept this, Philip? Come on. Well, I... You're not going to sit there and tell me they're accepting it. Well, sure they are. They are? They've been pretty supportive, yeah. I mean, I don't think they're not happy about it. But yeah. uh, to say, when you say, do they accept it? Sure. Yeah. Sure, I think they've uh, kind of reconciled themselves to the fact that I am... A little strange to them, and right. uh, you know, I'm going to do these things, and and you know, I think. But you did go with women. You're a bisexual person. You did go with women. Well, you know, I don't I don't like to use labels it's like labels. that. I mean, okay. I don't know if I. Uh, you don't have to, but I meant you did. But, but sure. Anyway, sure. in the movie, it says you both. Right. You have another part in the film with a lady. Right. An affair with a woman. Right. Now, who's this lady in this film? Her name is Annie Sprinkle. Annie Sprinkle. Is yeah, that she, the porno star? Yeah, she used to be a porn star. Now she's uh, become a performance artist. A performance? And she's written books, and she's very uh, widely versed, you might say. Uh -huh. I like the word you use, performance artist. Hmm. I, I don't know if I, if I accept that. But this is you right now. I'm going to show this. This is both you. Look at this little yarmulke or whatever it is. And, and here, what is this thing around your neck? That? That's that? called a talus. Talus. Mm -hmm. Well, the film opens, the reviews are great. Uh, 
you're talking about your family. Uh, you're talking mm -hmm. about uh, something about yourself. Tell me more about this film about yourself. Well, not only am I talking I about my family, they are all in the film. So, well, they are. So when you say that uh, they, uh, uh, you ask if they accept, I mean, they accepted and supported me enough to give me permission to use uh, interviews from all of them, including my grandmother. Mother. Your grandmother's in my, the film? My grandmother's in the film, absolutely. And what's she talking about? Uh, what did you ask her? Uh, well, I ask her more about her, her life and her philosophy of life, and, and part of it is like a quest for me to try to understand myself better by trying to gain insight from the people who created me, basically. Uh -huh. So, I want to show a clip. You okay. brought a clip from the film, and the other one I wouldn't show, but this one I will show, because okay. it has a little taste. Okay, let's show this clip from uh, I was a Jewish sex worker. <laughs> the abundance of Jewish images that I saw in New York triggered feelings of both affection and ambivalence toward my childhood religion. Although I wasn't raised Hasidic, their presence in the city was a daily reminder of both my ambivalence and of my dream to bridge the gap between my sexuality and my relationship with my family. <laughs> Interesting. Who encouraged Philip Roth to become a filmmaker? Well, uh, Rosa von Pronheim. Uh, Oops, that's that German? That German, gay Ooh. German filmmaker. He was among the first. Uh huh. And. Uh, you're sitting I there telling me this German, uh, as a Jewish boy, a ger a, a took a German man to influence Philip Roth to films mm -hmm. to do this? Uh huh. You lived in Germany for a while. You right. lived in Berlin, right. and you also lived in Paris. Right. Tell me about living in Paris and uh, first. Let's get to Paris. Well, Par Paris is the place that I really became inspired to be a filmmaker by watching so many films, because you can see more films in Paris right. than anywhere else in the world. It's true. 
Yes. But Berlin, tell me about Berlin now. You uh, well, Berlin, I was working for Rosa, and I did some, uh, I, I worked on sound for a couple of, uh, of his films, uh -huh. and he gave me a little bit of training and just really encouraged me, to, especially to make autobiographical films. But you never studied, actually, you never went to sound uh, film school at all. No, I didn't. Philip, you're sitting there, you never went. Never went to You film went to school. Berkeley? Yeah. From Berkeley, you went to New York and spent nine years or seven years or something like that? Right. In New York City? Right. <sighs> Incredible. And I didn't go and, to film school. And, it. and you did your first movie called Boy Life? Boy's Life, yeah. Boy's Life, and mm -hmm. that was like a short film. Uh, short film. And you got this one off the ground. It took you a little time, but the money... Uh, credit cards. Tell me about the credit cards. Tell me about this. How did you do this? Because credit cards. That's it. In in two words. You charged everything to the credit. Exactly. And you just made this movie. Mm -hmm. you determined to make this film. I was determined. Yeah, it was an obsession. To talk to you about Philip Roth's life, growing up as whatever he was doing. Well, Are you being honest with this film? You're, everything you're doing. It's uh -huh. like Kevin Thomas is the most honest person around. Uh huh. What do you think about that? You're getting great reviews about uh -huh. this film. I'm thrilled to get good reviews. And you're having a big party tonight at Cantor's. Cantor's is a very famous Jewish uh, right. restaurant here in L.A. Right. You're having a very big, are you going to have the lovely dancing and all that? Or? Uh, I don't know. I didn't uh -huh. arrange the party. Uh -huh. but <laughs> Where would you like to see yourself, Philip, say a few years after this film? Well, I'm working on I'm working on a film now that's a total fiction film, and you know I've made these autobiographical films, but you know I don't think there's much more to say about me, so I'm going to move on and do fiction films. You're very now. young. I'm very young. Yeah. You're very young. You can't. Well, I mean, what that. else could there be saying uh, about <laughs> Philip Roth? Maybe when I'm 60, I'll do another autobiography. What did you learn by becoming <sighs> Masur? What kind of people did you dealt with? All kinds of people. From like what? All kinds of people, from from teenagers. I had teenagers were the youngest, and then I had people. You had teenagers. Sure, giving masseurs, uh, massages to teenagers. Really? Sure, sure, guys who who had never had uh, an experience before, you know, with with anybody of any sex, and who just wanted some kind of a contact. Uh -huh. And uh, I had guys. Uh, I had one client in his seventies, you know, and everything uh -huh. in between. I had a lot of married guys. I had guys who were, uh, you know, guys who came with their wives. Right, right, right. Um, so where would you like to see the, uh, yourself, say, in a couple years? Oh, Quentin I, Carantino ish or what? Tell me, <laughs> I don't know, because I'm not used to this kind of a film. I mean, I'd like to it, be. I'd like to be in a place where I can uh, make films without having to charge them to my credit cards. Andy Warhol did some films like this at the beginning mm -hmm. with Joe D'Alessandro's and stuff like that. I think in Cherry Grove, mm -hmm. at the beginning of his career, a lot of people don't know that, but mm -hmm. Andy did. He shot a lot of that stuff. Uh huh. Did you ever meet him? Did I ever meet Andy yeah, Warhol? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I can't say that I no, did. I see. He was Do you want to be an Andy Warhol type uh, in the 90s now? Because you're living in New York. Right. And you're getting a lot of recognition, a young guy like you. So yeah. tell me about it. Well, like I said, I, I'd like to be able to just be able to make my living off my films and uh, you know, reach a little bit of a, a wider audience and not have to use my credit cards anymore. So that's my, that's my immediate goal. I find sex in films very, very tough to watch today, uh -huh. because young filmmakers like yourself are, are, are uh, I, I have to accept it, but makes me a little embarrassed, uh -huh. you know. But you people don't be embarrassed, do you? I just don't understand, but that's... Oh, I'm very embarrassed, you know, I'm very, I'm very shy, you know, I'm just not the type of person who would go and do a film like this, which is why I had to do it, you know what I mean? You had to do it. I you had to, f you feel better about doing it now. You got it all out of your system that you are whatever you were and you got it all out of your system and, you're, and your parents are accepting it well. They love it. Yeah, sure. I saw as, a clip of as, them. As, mm -hmm. Very interesting. Well, nice talking to you, Philip. Same here. I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you. Film. Fairy tales can come true. It can happen to you if your heart is young. And here is the best part You'll have a head start If you are among the ones whose heart is young The ladies
Louise and I used to sit around and play cards, knit, and watch the soaps. We made quite a team. Then one day, Helen heard about strength training. She got a free fact sheet just by calling 1-800-222-2225. We found lifting weights builds muscles and bones. It improves our balance, too. So now when we get together, we exercise. It really gives us a lift. Give yourself a lift. Call for a free fact sheet. Joey Buttafuoco, tell me something. Move to California, loving it here. I hear you saying it to everybody, loving Hollywood. Why? I just love California. Why is that? Well, the weather's great. You're from Long Island, right? Yeah, it rains all the time, it's cold. Everyone comes here and they love California, don't you? And you've been here how long now? About a year. A year? Yeah, I was, but I was doing the commute for about four years. Four years? So that got to be what do you mean, time. commute? You were coming back and forth? Yes. Really? Yeah, for work, different projects, different jobs. Signed a contract with this wonderful agency, keeping you busy. Mm hmm Several movies. Yeah. Doing a lot of television. A lot of television. But the film you just finished, I just... Uh, Tell me about the film you we, just finished. We just finished a film called The Underground Comedy. There was a lot of people in this film. Right. I think it's going to be a, like a cult film. Really? Yeah. Who's in it? Um, Gina Lee Nolan from Baywatch. Right. She's in it. Uh, Slash from Guns N' Roses. Uh-huh. He's great. Yeah, a bunch of other people are in it. We had a good time doing it. And what it. are you playing, Joey? Come on. Yeah, actually, a rough guy? Or? I, I play a bad guy. Um, <laughs> and you may even know who I play against. Uh, a fellow who's a regular at the uh, at the comedy store. His name is Mike Parisi. They call him Wheels. Yes, Great guy. Yes, yes, yes. Very funny guy. And he played the god, the godmother. And it was a whole gangster uh -huh. uh, thing. So uh, I'm looking at you. You're saying a nice guy. You're saying nice things about everybody. But everybody's saying bad things about Joey Budafuka. But you're getting out. they're not. Once they meet you, right. when they meet Joey. Right. They change their mind. You know, I don't blame them. If, they're gonna, if you're going to believe the image that the media created, I, I wouldn't like that guy either. But that's, that's not me. I mean, I can, right. I can, so I have to live with that. And I don't have a problem with that. Right. You know, but one, again, like you said, once people meet me, they're cool. You know, they realize, you know, when I hey, met this you, isn't that bad guy. That's know? right. When I met you, I thought I was going to meet something, you know. Yeah. But you're like not. Like a monster met, or something. Yeah, not yeah. really. Yeah, but, you know, but, but your wife, yeah. Mary Jo, and you, I met. Oh, she's charming. She's lovely. Not bitter. Not really bitter, no. is she? No, not at all. And you're not bitter, are you? Um, bitter? Are you? Yeah. No. What is Joey Buttafuoco right now? You are acting here. You are doing work. You're working, matter of fact, on the strip on Sunset. Yes. At a very famous club called the Rainbow, where all the stars go. Yeah, Rainbow Room. Tell me about it. It's the greatest. It's what are you doing there? Fun. I um I take care of the upstairs club. Um, I work the door, and I'm very happy to be doing that. You're at the door? I'm at the door. Upstairs. You greet everybody. And I'm, I'm a meter and a greeter. And you know something? I'm really happy about that. Call me whatever you want, but I'm happy doing it. It's great. What? You know you know Mario and Mike and Tony right. over there. Come the owners, on. right. It's a great club. When they see Joe Buttifuco when they're coming up those steps, <laughs> they're saying, hey, he's kind of familiar. What kind of reaction? Uh, people always say, you, you know, you look like Joey, but a few goes, anybody ever tell you that? And I said, ah, people tell me all the time, uh -huh, you know, I, uh, uh -huh. and then they'll figure it out as, they, as they're upstairs for a while. But everybody is very, very nice. Very nice. Studying acting? Yes. With who? I am in a workshop over here at Hollywood and Vine to the top. Uh -huh. Great bunch of people, Jay and Cynthia run it, and it is just a great workshop. I take cold reading class on Monday night and, uh -huh. and other... You seem like you're having a good time. I am. Looking back, when you were in Long Island, come on, Joey, ever thought that you were going to be an actor? You know, I'm glad you asked, asked me that. Yeah, go ahead. In 1985, I started in stunt work. Did you really? Yes, I got my first principal contract on As the World Turns, uh -huh. so I was able to join AFTRA. Right. So I've been doing it a long time. I oh, just I was on that. the other side uh -huh. of the camera, and now I don't get hurt. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Now I don't get beat up. So you've been a member for a long time. A long time, back east. Uh huh. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people don't know that, but. And you have children. How many? I have two kids. Two, boy and a girl. My son's Teenagers. seventeen. My daughter's fourteen. Great. Yeah, they're great kids. And I understand your daughter's into acting and stuff She's like that. She's been dancing for um, about eleven years. Uh huh. 
Mary Jo is just a nice housewife living in a valley. She's a valley girl now. She's a valley girl. How She's do you beautiful, feel very beautiful, always tan, uh -huh. and always looking good. And you see her all the time. Right. She's, a, living, She's a great lady. She's a living doll. When people, she, I mean, Jesus, I would be bitter and mean and mad. Yeah. But she is just so forgiving. Well, she has her moments, uh, you know, as we all do. But she is... Um, She's really had some recovery. Mm -hmm. let me tell you. We're very close. We're a very tight family. So it is a tight family. Yeah, absolutely. Very close. Yeah. The kids are really having a good time here. Yeah, they're doing real well. Joey, yes. Joey, come on! I'm, I'm looking at you about living in California. You don't miss New York. You don't miss your friends in Long Island. There's a few people that I miss from back east. You do? Yeah. Of course, I still have family you're... there. I have friends yeah. there, but hey. You know, I can You're a New Yorker, here. man. Living in the Valley, it's tough, I would say. Not for me. It isn't? No. You're a total New Yorker. I'm a beach guy. I love the beach anyway. I love the water. I love the hot weather. Uh huh. I miss my boat. I'm trying to get it chipped out from back east. That's right. You, you, you do boats. Yeah, I run. I run You're, them. And I run them hard. You run them hard? Yeah. Joey Buttafuoco, what do you really want to do? Really? Let's, what would you tell this audience now, tonight? How do they want, when they look at you, how do you want them to react? To uh, forgive the what or any there's, what There's else? nothing to forgive. I'm not even concerned about that. I just, I'm just looking for, like, peace in my, for, 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 for my family. Right. That's it. I just, just want to be able to go on with life. You know you're so like what? a, you know you're like a teddy bear. People don't know how, Joey, but a fool. Until they meet me, right? Yeah. I know, really. I know, I know. I got, I got scared rap. at first, but you did get a bad rap. Really bad rap. And it doesn't, do you? doesn't bother you well it did for a long time but you need to put it down and move on or you won't grow I, I have to grow in my own life to mm -hmm. be able to grow with my children and what I kind of roles do you want to do here in Hollywood Joey what would you like to do I just want to keep working you do go out and read and I you read do get a lot, a lot of part huh yes, you're reading I, a lot yes and what kind of reception I made a, I was made a great offer to do a great show in Vegas like what? The, 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 the dance shows at the... At the, um, the Stallone thing? No, that's something else. Oh, okay. This is something in Vegas to um, introduce the, the dance, the dancation acts, you know, when uh -huh. the girls that come out and dance. I was made a great deal. I'm debating whether to take it or not. As a host MC? I had to host a show. In the major casinos? That'd be that's fun. a great spot hey, for me. Well, that's... Vegas is great uh, for you. Yeah, I think so. You go to Vegas a lot? Too? Yes, I love Vegas. Yeah. Is Joey Butterfield a gambler? No. Not at all? No. Well, look at you. I thought you would gamble. A little bit. Horses. A little bit. I shoot craps and I love it. The energy level is so high. Yeah. And when you get into it, you start to go wild. But <laughs> yeah, I do. You do? Yeah. But not to a point where I'm in trouble with it. I just go and have a great time for two or three days. How does, how does the kids in class, because these kids are young little kids in class studying acting. How do they accept Joey Betafuku in this class? There's not, there's a lot of, oh, I'm only 40. Oh, I don't mean you're an old Something. man. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, <laughs> there's young little kids in class. No, but no, but there aren't no all it's ages. an adult, an adult class. Yeah. So how, a lot of people how do that have they... done a lot of things that are in this class. That We take scene study classes, we take uh, cold reading classes, uh -huh. you know, technique class. There's a lot. It's not just, you know, acting, a straightaway acting class. Mm -hmm. People go to stay sharp. That's what I, that's why that's I what go. you go for. It. Sure, exactly. stay Keep sharp. Keep your tools sharp. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you do any comedy at all? I, I, I yes, I do. I, I would love. I, to, I would love to. to do some comedy. I would really. love to, but that's the toughest job in the world. I mean, you've done it for for years. You would be the hecklers. You, uh, probably, you, you can handle the heck. Yeah, but I don't know if I want to be in a position where, you know, in that position, you know. Because uh -huh. the audience is a tough, and it's a tough job to do. Being Dice a stand Clay, up, look at Dice Clay. I Andrew's mean, a very talented, talented You're good comic. friends with Andrew Dice. I know Andrew pretty good, yeah, he's a, but he's a real good guy. I like him a lot. Tell me about the comedy store. What's, what's happening with the comedy store? Oh, I'm over there quite a bit. Um, maybe I'll hope to get a spot over there and do something. Uh-huh. The comedy store. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Stallone. You are good friends with Sylvester's mother. She loves you. She adores Joey Badafuka and his wife. She thinks you're great people. See, I, a lot of people out there don't know you. And when they meet you, boy, they I change think their Jackie minds. Jackie is great. I really do. I think she she's she's a a, a, a very nice woman. She's tough. Yeah. I like her a lot. I would love to get hooked up into her, her what her boxy boxer, her girls, boxer girls. you know, and, and go on the road with that. That would just be a charge. That's a whole lot of. That's fun. a great idea. Yeah. Joey Badafuka with the boxers. I, I would love to do that on the road. The girl boxers. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to fight them. I would MC the show. That's what I mean. You know, I, I would do that in a heartbeat. Uh huh. Yeah, I would do that with Jackie. That would be a lot of fun. Do you come over the? And then uh, the people there would say, "Look at him! Look at him! Look at him go on the road with all these women. He, he he's he's got to be guilty of something." <laughs> The Meanwhile, guilty, all the guys guilty. that are there watching these shows are out cheating on their old ladies. So what are you looking at me and breaking my balls for? Right, right, yeah. right, right. Do you feel that, huh? All the time, every, if you look at a beautiful girl. 
If you look at a no, 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 I don't, I don't take that as a, a challenge, or a I don't challenge. take that as somebody testing right. me or anything. I don't worry about. Are you that. doing any writing right now? Yes. Tell me about your writing. Yeah, I'm working. We're working on a treatment. Um, me and a friend of mine, Alex. She's she's a great writer for our own show. So, right. but I don't want to divulge too much. No, of that's that. okay. Right now, it's going to be very, it has a very interesting. You're going to have your own little format of your show. Absolutely. And it's going to be something very interesting, I hear. Yeah, it's hopefully it'll be an HBO thing. Uh huh. You know. So Joey, you Dada heard Cuco. about that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I certainly did. There, boy, no there. secrets in this town. No, no, yeah. no. There's a lot of gossip in this town. Yeah. Oh. Please. Boy, when you walk at Mateo's on Sunday night, everybody knows everything. Boy, yeah. that Sunday night Mateo's. Joey, did you get a lot of calls from that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joey, I just went to have dinner. Just good. you when you go to the restaurants. Yeah. A lot of problems sometimes. Never think? a problem. Just the, I, people ever come up to you and say, "Hey, you know, give me your autograph." Oh, yeah, that happens all the time. That in pictures. That's, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But it's, you ask me if I ever have any problems. No, I never had any problems with anybody. The guys. If it is, it's few and far between, and it's not even important. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have an issue with something after five years, you know, get on with your life. I have. Absolutely. You know, you, Mary jo so and I you tight. mean Mary Jo and you are very tight. Oh, and close. yes. That's good. That's good to know. Absolutely. That's Please. wonderful. I wonder about Hollywood. Doing a, a wonderful, you're, you know, you're very much Stallone, a Stallone -ish, uh, Sylvester should use you in a movie. That would be nice. You know, <laughs> are you friends with him? I've met him. Yeah. I'm, I'm not friends with him, but I've, I've met uh -huh. him. Uh -huh. What kind of reaction some of the people around Hollywood when you go in to read the casting offices? What kind of reaction does Joey Buttafuoco get? Because, you know, some of these casting peoples are just tough sometimes. Oh, yeah. You know. What do you think when you're going in there to read? Well, I'm going in for a specific part. Mm -hmm. And I think when I walk in the door, well, actually, they know who I am before I get there, naturally, because they have the Does picture that, and that, the resume and all that. Yeah, do you think that's uh, hindered because they know already who you are? Because you you're know, also, uh, you're tight. I, I, so I, I'm already stereotyped in my own life. And I, and in your like, life. I'm, I'm going in to do a, you know, movies are like fantasy. You know? Right. So, and, but I'm a very real person. I'm reality. You yes, know, so you for, are. to put somebody who's real into something that's a, like a fantasy, these films, yeah. it's kind of difficult. Like when I walk in, everybody will be like, is that Joy? What if you go, right, right, you know, right, right. So I get all that. Growing that's up, okay. Growing it's, it's up okay. in Long Island. You grew up in Long Island? Yes. So you <laughs> sure did. did. You had a nice childhood? Yeah, I think I did. You had a fun, huh? Yeah. Growing up? Mary Jo and I both, we've known each other, uh, we've known each other since, since, uh, kids? since we're 14. You're kidding. No, man. You met each other since you were 14? Yeah. That was your first? My high school sweetheart, babe. Oh, that was your love. That was the love of my life. It wasn't my first sweetheart, but she's my, was my soulmate. She is absolutely my soulmate. Where would you like to see yourself, say, three years from now, Joey? Oh, God. I don't even know where we're going to be after this show today. Really? Is that the I don't, I, don't pro I don't project that. I take it a day at a time, just nice and easy. Nice and easy. Yeah. So Joey's Planning better my children's to... life. I plan our, our, we can plan, make plans, but I, no projection. So Joey's having a good time. He's relaxed, taking it easy here in California. Yeah. And working the world famous Rainbow Bar and Grill. I'm having a, great, a good time. It's a great place. Yeah, Who's some of the stars down? been up there oh, lately? Everybody comes in there. Who like who? For everybody. I, I'm like, I can't start dropping names because uh -huh. you know.
<laughs> Interesting. Who encouraged Philip Roth to become a filmmaker? Well, uh, Rosa von Pronheim. Uh, Oops, that's that German? That German, gay Ooh. German filmmaker. He was among the first. Uh huh. And. Uh, you're sitting I there telling me this German, uh, as a Jewish boy, a, 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 took a German man to influence Philip Roth to films to do this? Uh huh. You lived in Germany for a while. You right. lived in Berlin, right. and you also lived in Paris. Right. Tell me about living in Paris and uh, first. Let's get to Paris. Well, Par Paris is the place that I really became inspired to be a filmmaker by watching so many films because you can see more films in Paris right. than anywhere else in the world. It's true. But Berlin, tell me about Berlin now. You, uh, well, as you both. Right. You have another part in the film with a lady. Right. An affair with a woman. Right. Now, who's this lady in this film? Her name is Annie Sprinkle. Annie Sprinkle. Is yeah, that she, the porno star? Yeah, she used to be a porn star, and now she's uh, become a performance artist. A performance? And she's written books, and she's very uh, widely versed, you might say. Uh -huh. I like the word you use, performance artist. Hmm. I, I don't know if I accept that. But this is you right now. I'm going to show this. This is both you. Look at this little yarmulke or whatever it is. And, and here, what is this thing around your neck? That? That's that? called a talus. Talus. Mm -hmm. Well, the film opens. The reviews are great. Uh, you're talking about your family. Uh, you're talking mm -hmm. about uh, something about yourself. Tell me more about this film about yourself. Well, not only am I talking I about my family, they are all in the film. So, well, they are. So when you say that uh, they... Uh, uh, you ask if they accept. I mean, they accepted and supported me enough to give me permission to use uh, interviews from all of them, including my grandmother. Your grandmother's in my, the film? My grandmother's in the film, absolutely. And what she's talking about, uh, What do you ask her? Uh, well, I ask her more about her, her life and her philosophy of life, and, and part of it is like a quest for me to try to understand myself better by trying to gain insight from the people who created me, basically. Uh -huh. So, I want to show a clip. You okay. brought a clip from the film, and the other one I wouldn't show, but this one I will show because okay. it has a little taste. Okay, let's show this clip from uh, I Was a Jewish Sex Worker. <laughs> the abundance of Jewish images that I saw in New York triggered feelings of both affection and ambivalence toward my childhood religion. Although I wasn't raised Hasidic, their presence in the city was a daily reminder of both my ambivalence and of my dream to bridge the gap between my sexuality and my relationship with my family. I was working for Rosa, and I did some. Uh, I, I worked on sound for a couple of uh, of his films, uh -huh. and he gave me a little bit of training, and just really encouraged me to, especially You'd to make autobiographical films. But you never studied. Actually, you never went to sound uh, film school at all. No, I didn't. Philip, you're sitting there. You never went. Never went to. You film went to school. Berkeley. Yeah. From Berkeley, you went to New York and spent nine years or seven years or something like that. Right. In New York City. Right. <sighs> Incredible. And I didn't go and, to film school. And, and you did your first movie called Boy Life? Boy's Life, yeah. Boy's Life, and that was like a short film. Uh, short film. And you got this one off the ground. It took you a little time, but the money, uh, credit cards. Tell me about the credit cards. Tell me about this. How did you do this? Because Credit cards, that's it, in, in two words. You charged everything to the credit? Exactly. And you just made this movie? Mm -hmm. You determined to make this film? I was determined, yeah. It was an obsession. To talk to you about Philip Roth's life growing up as whatever he was doing. Well, Are you being honest with this film? You're, everything you're doing. It's uh -huh. like Kevin Thomas is the most honest person around. Uh -huh. What do you think about that? You're getting great reviews uh -huh. about this film. I'm thrilled to get good reviews. And you're having a big party tonight at Cantor's. 
Cantor's is a very famous Jewish uh, right. restaurant here in L.A. Right. You're having a very big, are you going to have the lovely dancing and all that? Or? Uh, I don't know. I didn't uh -huh. arrange the party. Uh -huh. but <laughs> Where would you like to see yourself, Philip, say a few years after this film? Well, I'm working on I'm working on a film now that's a total fiction film, and you know I've made these autobiographical films, but you know I don't think there's much more to say about me, so I'm going to move on and do fiction films. You're very now. young. I'm very young. Yeah. You're very young. You can't. Well, I mean, what that. else could there be saying uh, about <laughs> Philip Roth? Maybe when I'm 60, I'll do another autobiography. What did you learn by becoming <sighs> Masur? What kind of people did you dealt with? All kinds of people. From like what? All kinds of people, from from teenagers. I had teenagers were the youngest, and then I had people. You had teenagers. Sure, giving masseurs, uh, massages to teenagers. Really? Sure, sure, guys who who had never had uh, an experience before, you know, with with anybody of any sex, and who just wanted some kind of a contact. Uh -huh. And uh, I had guys. Uh, I had one client in his seventies, you know, and everything uh -huh. in between. I had a lot of married guys. I had guys who were, uh, you know, guys who came with their wives. Right, right, right. Um, so where would you like to see the, uh, yourself, say, in a couple years? Oh, Quentin Tarantino-ish or what? <laughs> Tell me, I don't know. Because I'm not used to this kind of a film. I mean, I'd, like to be, I'd like to be in a place where I can uh, make films without having to charge them to my credit cards. And uh -huh. do these things. You wrote a screenplay about it. You, first of all, you did one first screenplay, Boy's Life. Right. Th was that about your life, too? Mm-hmm. A shorty. Yeah. This was a short. Yeah. And it got great reviews in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And um, this, matter of fact, just got back from Berlin right. with this one. Right. I was a Jewish sex worker. Uh, God, what do you think about the Jewish peoples hearing that word? Uh, they're fagala. It's a fagala. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, well, I mean, come on. Well, you know, I think it was uh, like a prostitute. It really, yeah, you got paid for this. Exactly, now. exactly. How do you feel about this? Well, I feel uh, okay about it. It was something uh, that I did for that period in my life. Uh, I had good and bad times doing it. You know, I don't look at it like it was necessarily a, a negative thing. No, I, I understand. A lot of people. But your mother and father, they're from a very, very Jewish family. Right. Here in L.A. Right. Or, come on, how do they react about their Philip Roth? Well, I think they, they think I'm a little strange. And probably, and rightfully so. A little. Say. Come on. <laughs> I mean, I think it was it was bad enough first, you know, having a son who's a, a fagala, and then and then doing erotic massage, and and then on top of everything, he had to go and make a movie about it. Exactly. So why did you do that, Philip? Come on. Do you, do you, I mean, explaining I, the reviews are good. Here, I'm just reading a review that Kevin Thomas gave you, and a good reviewer uh -huh. loves it. I mean, he isn't, loves... Isn't he, that shocking? Yeah, it is, because it's, you know, I don't like what's-his-name in, in New York City on the radio. You know who I'm talking about, in the sex part of his life, and biggest thing in the business. I have no, you know, I can't believe it. Uh -huh. But he made a great movie about his life, too, you know, Howard Stern. Uh-huh. But here's another Jewish boy. Uh-huh. And now you're coming up with this Jewish sex work, massaging right. as a male prostitute. Right. And your mother and father, how do they accept this, Philip? Come on. Well, I... You're not going to sit there and tell me they're accepting it. Well, sure they are. They are? They've been pretty supportive, yeah. I mean, I don't think they're not happy about it. But yeah. uh, to say, when you say, do they accept it? Sure. Yeah. Sure, I think they've uh, kind of reconciled themselves to the fact that I am... A little strange to them, and right. uh, you know, I'm going to do these things, and and you know, I think. But you did go with women. You're a bisexual person. You did go with women. Well, you know, I don't I don't like to use labels like labels? that. I mean, okay. I don't know if I. Uh, you don't have to, but I meant you did. But, but sure. Anyway, sure. in the movie, it says.
you know, I, I grew up on Cherry Street in the Lower East Side of New York, and it was a lot of fun. I used to work Sammy's Bowery Follies, and for Sammy Futes and Betsy, and it was a very Jewish area where I worked. And I mean very, very Jewish. Second Avenue, good Jewish theater. Um, Philip Roth, you are Jewish, and you wrote a, a screenplay called I Was a Jewish Sex Worker. Sex worker, delicate. What do you mean by I was a Jewish sex worker? Is it, and it's a whole thing about your life. This is a mm. true, true story. Right. And you're born from L.A. You came from uh, L.A. I'm from to L.A., New York. three blocks from the Music Hall Theater where it's going to play, Maple Drive. The movie opens today mm -hmm. here in Los Angeles in Beverly Hills. Right. Delicate, uh, delicate words, sex worker. What do you mean by that? Well, a sex worker could be anything working. Uh, I, I did what I called erotic massage, which was I gave uh, men massages, like sexual massage. I had an ad in the back of a of a, one of the gay newspapers. Mm -hmm. And a uh, sex worker could also mean people who do like st stripping, dancing of some right, sort, right. porn. People in the porn industry will sometimes call mm -hmm. themselves sex workers. I see. But you would give them massages. Right. And used to go to their homes or mm -hmm. into their hotel rooms.